return to the right path. Give all room for the faith they profess, or accounted Christians. The grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ, and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Let's be God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, to be holy without limit before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ. In accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that grants us in his deep love, in him we have redemption by his blood. The forgiveness of transgressions in accord with the riches of his grace that he lavished upon us. In all wisdom and insight, we have made known to us the mystery of his will in accord with his favor. That he set forth us in himself as a plan for the fullness of time. To sum up things in Christ, in heaven and on earth. In him, we were also chosen, destined in accord with the purpose of the one who accomplishes all things according to the intention of his will. So that we might exist for the praise of his glory. We who first hoped in Christ, in him also, who have heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, and have believed in him, was sealed with the promises Holy Spirit, which is the first installment of our inheritance toward the redemption as God possessing to the praise of his glory. My sisters and brothers, the word of the Lord.
but a walking stick. No food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there. Shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with all many who were safe and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> He was not well received. 
he was ordered to leave by Amaziah, who was the priest of that uh, schismatic uh, sanctuary in Bethel, in the northern part. So he said, up you go, prophet, go and prophesy and earn your living in your homeland. Stay away from the king's sanctuary. And then Amos told him, gave him a piece of his mind, he said, look, I am not a prophet, nor a prophet's son. I was a dresser of sycamore tree and a shepherd. For the Lord called me to come to prophesy. And now you listen, Amaziah. Israel will go to exile and your own family will be destroyed. Isn't that something? Anyway, so he was told not to preach. He didn't back out. He went ahead and preached. Now, um, but take note that they did not pay attention to him. And the other part is that this man was a farmer. He was not a professional prophet. He was not doing prophecy for money. Now, the other side of the call we find in the New Testament was the, uh, the apostles. Twelve apostles from the pool of the disciples of people who come to listen to Jesus, he chose twelve. He chose twelve guys. And he sent them two by two. He said, You go and evangelize. And he had told them from the get go, I'm going to make you fishers of men. And he said, Carry no money bag, no other sad, no extra drink. Just go and do the work. Now cure the sick and expel demons. Raise the dead. And they went about doing that. The apostles went. And as they were doing their work, the whole world Cut the fire of God's word. The word that is sharper than two edged sword. The work they did was the reason why you and I are Catholics, are Christians today. And now, it was not an easy road for them. Of course, the Lord had told them. Be as wise as serpents, but as innocent as dogs. And I had prepared them that their message may not be received well. And guess what? Of the twelve apostles, one eventually committed suicide, you know, Judas, and one was entrusted uh, to the care, was asked to take care of the Blessed Mother, and she and he went, he was exiled to the island of Patmos. Eventually, he lived in Ephesus with Blessed Mother and took care of her till a period of assumption. That's John. So the rest of the ten, all of them bore witness to Jesus with their blood. They all died martyrs. They were martyrs. From Peter till the last. Now, the million dollar question. The apostles were called, Amos were called, and you also called yes. to be a prophet. Yes. Are you? Yes. yes, we are. Jeremiah, through prophet Jeremiah, the Lord said, Before you were conceived, I know you. Before you were formed in the womb, I called you a prophet to the nations, I dedicated you. To whomever I send you, you must go. Whatever I tell you, you must speak. And you cannot say, Lord, I am too young. No, you cannot say that. Now, uh, we might say, well, I'm 
professional for you. It is for everybody. And you can see that Amos was a dresser of sycamore tree. It's like, you know, if some of us were to say, well, I'm just a lawyer. I'm an attorney. I'm not a priest. I'm not a bishop. Uh, you guys, you do it. No. The Lord is saying it's for everybody. You might be a doctor, or a lawyer, or a teacher, or a nurse, or an architect, or an accountant, or a cleaner, or full-time mom, or full-time dad, or even retired. We are all called the prophetic nation. And now, where we go, might not be far away now. Might be right there where you are. To your family, to your children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews. And you might say, I'm not really trained in this kind of thing. I, it is not my thing. No. You better get going with the work you are called. By the fact of baptism, all of us we are prophet, priest, and king. And that's, you cannot cap out of it. So, how can you do that work in your own day and age? There are a few things that you can do. Number one, let it be easy. Or let it let the religious language come readily to your lips. Have faith talk. And what do I mean by that? Let it not be, don't, let it not be too hard for you. Don't be shy to say publicly, God bless you. Let it not be hard for you to say, well, I thank God for today. Or even to leave family in the grace before me. When you do things like that, you are evangelizing. And how else can we do that? Do not be shy to give people the reason for the hope that lodges in your heart. So if somebody wants to know why you can't why do you believe? Be able to share it. You don't need to be a theologian. You don't need to be a priest. You don't, you don't even need to go to Rome in order to do that or to Superville or elsewhere. But the faith that you know, that you have learned. And if you are not comfortable with the faith, learn it. Learn it. Read the Word of God. There are many, many, many literatures out there. The Catechism of the Catholic Church and a lot of wonderful books. Books by Bishop Barry is my favorite. So, uh, you know, now. And, uh, um, uh, and Pope Benedict, Pope Francis, and John Paul II, or Fulton Jeshi, any of those authors. Don't spend too much time reading much of Protestant authors because you're going to be teaching Protestant theology when you be, open your mouth. You can read them, but as an aside, read the work of the people who were our ancestors in faith, who knew. Read the fathers, St. Ignatius, St. Augustine. In fact, our St. Augustine ranks as one of the greatest of the fathers. There is no area of Christian life he had not found. So, be informed about the faith and know it. And then, if you're ready to do that work, be ready to be unpopular. Yes, because like Amos, like Elijah, like Jeremiah, like Isaiah, like the apostles, people are not going to be hailing you. You know, because you're going to say things that will make them uncomfortable. The, uh, the ancient Romans say, he who says to you, tell me what I want to hear, or the person who tells you always what you want to hear is not a good friend. The person who tells you what you need to hear is a good friend. Yeah. Now, there is something 
that had happened in our history as people of faith. There was a time in history where that what predominated was the preaching of the truth, truth alone, the preaching fire of fire and brimstone. But later on, there was a shift. We began to preach only the grace. No, we began to say only, well, God loves you. You are, you are wonderful. Which is true that everybody is wonderful. We are made in God's image and likeness. But we are also human beings that are striving to perfection. So what dominated became, you are wonderful, you are great. You don't need confession. And, and you don't need anything. You don't commit any sin. You are almost an angel. But you know that is not complete gospel. The gospel truth that does not go with grace, that is not spiced with grace, will be harsh weapon. But grace without the truth will look little cloths. It will be too eviscerated. It will be too it will be bromide. It will be just wishy wash. So the full gospel is to preach grace and truth. There is heaven. And people who follow the footsteps of the Lord go there. And there is hell. People who do not say, who do not love, who do not want to follow the way of Christ, they go there. That's it. Full gospel, grace, and truth. Now, when you look at how the Lord commanded the apostles, the, the apostles what he told them to do, he said, you don't go with any extra food and things like that. Because a laborer deserves his wages. Now, that by saying that, what is alluding to was the same command that was given to our ancestors in faith on the eve of their departure from the land of slavery in Egypt to the promised land. By giving them the same command, the, the evangelist is, say, is trying to remind to us that what God has called us to do is like exodus, to lead people out of the darkness into God's wonderful life, to lead people to freedom, to paradise, to the kingdom of God. And in your work as a prophet, that's it. So sometimes you have to engage in a hard button issue, you know, social justice, oppression of the poor, of the immigrants, or destruction of human life, or destruction of the innocent, of the unborn, you have to stand up and defend life and defend truth wherever it is needed. You cannot say, well, that's not my call. You have to give the full, the full gospel. Grace and truth together. And finally, Always, it might not even demand you doing something very far. It might be a simple thing. I share with you a story, you know, from my childhood. From my childhood, I think I was maybe in sixth grade at the time, and I was preparing to go to secondary school. Where I grew up, secondary school begins with seventh grade. So my mom took me to go to see my uncle, who is supposed to be wealthy, and he lives in the city, and, and my mom wants to tell him to help her in paying my tuition in secondary school when I start. Because by that time, my father had died. So anyway, we came to this uncle, and um, they gave us good dinner, and then after dinner, I knelt down, at the room they told us that we would sleep and pray. And the son came in and, and, and he was shocked to see me pray. So maybe he doesn't do it, but he was touched. So 
what it did, it got me a book. The story of St. Francis of Assisi for boys. Mm. He gave me that book. And I read it over and over again. And I tell you, what that book did to me is beyond words. Because what it did is that it helped attune my mind to open my heart when I felt that call of the Lord. When I felt the call to preach. So Sometimes, you might need to give religious gifts, books of prayer, to retreat your life of the saints. Don't buy only thoughts, and don't give out the only money all the time. Give something they can treasure, they can read and learn from. You might even sometimes give a gift of baptism. They may toss it, but one day they will read it. There was a child that was given a gift of Bible by his father. And he said, this is what you're giving me for birthday. He tossed it. But he didn't realize that inside that Bible, the father had put in a new car title. <laughs> so, and when his father had died, one day he picked up that Bible to read and he saw that. So, in conclusion, dear brothers and sisters, when you set about to evangelize as much as you can, uh, you might sometimes feel, well, I don't have all the words. Trust the Lord. He said, do not be afraid of what to say. Because what, will be, what you will say will be given to you at that hour. Matthew chapter 10, verse 19. And when you engage in that and you feel alone, remember this word. Say, Behold, I am with you always till the end of time. Amen? Amen. Amen. May we rise and perfect our faith. I believe in the Lord.
but if also encounters with God in the scriptures and in the sacraments we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our the world leaders may recognize God as the source of true authority and may seek mercy and freedom from all people who pray to the Lord. Lord hear our that the church may preach with compassion the need of repentance from all sins against life and point the way to a new reverence for those who are poor, weak, unwanted, and unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That those gathered in our community of faith may embrace God's message of compassion and forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That those who have died may have peace and joy in the presence of God, whom they serve on earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. That the Lord will grant us success in all our endeavors, especially in the work of evangelization, and that He will give us the grace to know that success is not what He calls us to, but calls us to be faithful. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those of our community who are in hospitals, nursing homes, are recovering at home, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. And for what else shall we pray? We pray to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. My brother will be undergoing surgery tomorrow. Lord hear our prayers.
that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to our God, the Almighty Father. <laughs> Church, O oh Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me.
my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
participation in this ministry is having an effect upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May we sit for a moment for announcement.
So in their honor, we have a lunch, a kind of delicious banquet. And it is in honor of the choir, but everybody is invited because everybody's, um, um, everybody's meal is included. So don't go home without getting your own meal. And, and, and what we're going to do is at the end of the last, before the closing song, I'm going to say the grace after meal. Maybe by the time I quit talking, I'll say the grace after meal. <laughs> <laughs> and so that, you know, by the time we process out, you can just go and, and uh, grab your phone to go or something to sit and, and, and eat. Now, the other thing I want to mention, which is not a, uh, which is not a surprise, is, a, is an acknowledgement of one of us who had been appointed a distinguished professor in the University of Memphis, and that is Dr. Bond. All right. All right.
en mi nombre. Uh, some, as a result of natural causes, you know, when people age and die, they're no longer in the roster. Eh? But, you know, our younger generations are not coming. They go to college, they graduate out of Catholic Church. What is wrong? Maybe there is something we are doing wrong, or maybe there is something that we didn't do right. But today is the day of salvation. Now is the time we can still change and do the things and just be vibrantly Catholic. Finally, uh, Father Post, I want me to send greetings to you. And I want you to know that some of our church members went to St. John because today he was installed pastor of St. John. So thank the Lord for him. And the last, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of the Mass today, which we offered for Sister Nick, I'd like to encourage you, when you say your prayers, include Sister Nick in your prayers, um, that uh, this period will be a peaceful one for her, and that she will find herself in the arms of Jesus when the time comes. And if you need more information, on sister. Uh, sister Jackie is going to share that with you. And I know she's in uh, Dubuque, Iowa, and the mother house there. Sister Jackie, would you like to say something? Uh, uh, probably the most important thing I'd like to say is if Sister Nick was able to express a wish right now, it would be to be here. Um, she has a recording of um, the choir that. Um, <coughs> Uh, when she was able to do that, she played in her room all the time mm -hmm. in Dubuque, and it would always be on when I would uh, go in to visit her. And last night, I read over her five wishes uh, again. I haven't looked at it in a while. And she wrote it um, in 2017. And um, what she said was that she especially wanted to express her gratitude to the people of IC in Clarksdale, that's an echo conception in Clarksdale, Mississippi, and St. Augustine for teaching her the way of justice and peace in the gospel mm -hmm. and inspired her for the rest of her life. And I know she meant that. Mm -hmm. um, this, this was home for her. So, um, I know this parish has been prophetic in my life, and I know it's been prophetic in her life. Amen. And she's deeply grateful for that, even though right now she can't say that, but I know it's in her heart. And thank you so much for the song you just sang. Um, her heart can hear that, mm -hmm. and it means a lot. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Well, since I've already here the microphone, I might as well use this opportunity to welcome all our guest friends of St. Augustine, people who are visiting from another parish or from out of town. So if you are visiting from another parish or from out of the area, could you stand and tell us your name and where you're visiting from? Thank you. 